Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here, and welcome to day 12 of A Fortnite of Film, a vlogging marathon where I shoot a different roll of film every single day. And today's interesting, because if you watch my vlog for yesterday, then I told you I was going to start again, like right at midnight. Uh, it didn't work out that way, and now it's 3.30 in the morning. I ended up having a couple hours sleep, for better or for worse, I'm not too sure yet, I guess we'll see. I only woke up in the last 10 minutes, so forgive me if I'm a little... Oh. Sleepy-eyed. And I am ready to take some night photography. <laughs> Yesterday, I asked you guys which film you'd like to see me shoot with, Vision 3, 500T, or 800T, and by a vote of just 52%, you chose Vision 3 800T. This will be my second crack at ECN2 film and developing. So all I know is that the T in 800T stands for tungsten, so it's supposed to basically make orange lights white. That's my understanding of it. I figured what better film to shoot at night. I will be using my trusty Nikon FE with the 28 to 105. Due to the cold weather, I will not be changing lenses. And today I'm gonna to be using a tripod as well due to the low light situation. But nothing to do now, but get this camera loaded and head on out. things that uh, you should probably know about tonight's shoot. First off, night photography isn't necessarily one of my strong suits, so I'll be bracketing a lot of my shots. Next thing is I will be hopping to a few different locations. It's about minus two Celsius right now, but Minus two in the middle of the night. It's actually quarter after four, so I guess it's technically morning, but it's still night photography. And then the other thing is, is that Calgary's been replacing all the tungsten lighting with LED. So... Now, I'm not going to be specifically searching out tungsten lights. I'm just going to be looking for any type of neat light or signage. So it doesn't really matter. I guess tungsten balanced film is becoming obsolete. Just coming up to my first location now. It's a pawn shop, and I photographed it at night before, but not with color tungsten balanced film. So this should be interesting, because the last time I shot this, it was on digital. And I really have no idea how I'm going to meter this. So it'll be interesting to see how they turn out, if at all. Here's my setup. I figure my best bet is to either meter off the sign or the pavement and just let everything else fall where it, fall where it falls. I'm getting 0.3 seconds at f5.6 at a course ISO 800. And I bracketed half a second and four seconds and two seconds as well yeah so I think it took about five frames there I don't know if you noticed but I fired the trigger at the last second while I was talking 
uh, in order to capture that guy blowing through the red light. And I really hope the four second exposure turns out better than the rest because then I've got tail lights going through a red light. So, but uh, yeah, on to the next location now. Just arrived at my second location. It's a diner. I believe it's called Galaxy Diner, and it's uh, got a really neat sign. Looks like half the bulbs are out, but whatever, that'll make it look interesting. I photographed it before, but again, I've done it digitally. I haven't done it on film, at least to my recollection. So same as before, I'm gonna set up my tripod and meter somewhere I think would be decent for a medium gray and then bracket it by one or two stops. As you can see, I was in and out of there pretty quick. Um, it metered for like a fifth of a second off of the glass, which is probably a little bright. And I ended up getting a shot on either side of that reading at 5.6. Uh, I think two stops and maybe even three or four stops on either side. I also hopped into the alleyway and I saw some graffiti lit up by a single light. And for that, I just used the camera's meter and I ended up doing one stop exposure compensation on either side. So two locations and I'm already on shot number 14. Like I said before, I want insurance. I want to make sure that at least a couple of these shots are going to turn out. And the only way to the only way to ensure it is to bracket. Folks, I arrived at the perfect location, this was not planned, to try out the tungsten balance. There are some strong orangey lights at the front of here. This should make for an interesting shot. Yeah, I've taken a whole whack of shots here, I couldn't even tell you. Everything I can think of from, everything from 1 15th of a second to 4 seconds. I really want to make sure I get this one. This is such a beautiful hotel. I'm assuming these LEDs are gonna end up blue. If any of the shots turn out tonight, I hope it's that one or one of those. Um, I've always loved the Palliser. I couldn't think of a better film to try out at a better time than the Palliser Hotel at this time with those lights on. Because normally everything's bustling, but here I had a clear shot of the entrance. I was able to create a symmetrical look. Yeah, so I took a whole whack. <laughs> I went from 14 shots to 22. So I took eight different exposures. And if they're all off, then I'll throw my camera out. <laughs> well, I won't, but I'll be really upset. Um, and yeah, I don't know if I said this already, but that was not planned. That was not planned. I just saw it while I was on my way to the next location. And I was like, yes, I need to get the Palliser. So moving on to my actual location now. Oh man, the sign that I was looking forward to photographing the most, it's off. Man, oh man. Yeah, it's neon lights normally at night, but I guess that's just when it's open. Uh, makes sense that they'd want to save money. Well, not sure what I'm going to do now. So I'm just off of Stephen Avenue, which is uh, one of the oldest streets in the city. Lots of old buildings. 
and I am parking in a loading zone. That gives me 20 minutes to come up with, um, well, to come up with something. Well, I shot the rest of my frames. I'll admit, I rushed myself a little, and I might have over-bracketed my shots, but I just can't stand the idea of pulling that film off the spool and nothing coming up. And just like the other day with Danielle, it's not just a matter of having good negatives. I want it to be how I visualized it. And with my limited experience with night photography, over bracketing was really the only way to go. So it's just, uh, it's just about 5.30 and there's nothing to do now but get home, get some rest, and then get this film developed. All right, folks, it is later in the day. It's about 12.30, and I don't want to say I'm well-rested, but I have slept. <laughs> and, uh, and I've already got the film in the tank, and I've already got the chemicals in the bath. One of the things that I needed to do today was buy a new thermometer, as you can see. This one was dropped in the water one too many times, and that's the end of it, unfortunately. I went out and I grabbed another one. I tend to buy cooking thermometers that are good enough, and this one measured, when I put them both in the developer, they both measured exactly the same. So they're either equally accurate or equally inaccurate. Now the thing that I wanna test out for the first time today, for really reals, is the magnetic heater. This is going to be for the pre-bath, because everything else needs to be like 100. Um, actually, the developer needs to be 106, and everything else needs to be 100. Basically, you get the developer to 106, and then when you start the whole process, you just pull everything out of the bath, and it should lower enough to acceptable temperatures by the time you use them. But the pre-bath that removes the REM jet only needs to be 80. And I figured the easiest way to do that was to have something separate heating it. Now the last time I used this, just a regular old hot plate, used to warm my coffee on it, and not very powerful. So this process of heating it up to 80 Fahrenheit should be a lot quicker. Now the pre-bath exploded in my face last time, so I will definitely make sure and keep these on. I'm basically at 106 Fahrenheit there. Once I get to 80 Fahrenheit here, I'll pull out the remaining bottles and start the process. Once I pour the dev, I'll keep the dev out and I'll use the remaining water for my washes in between cycles. I'm telling you all this now because once I start, I should really just focus on the task at hand. Uh, if it explodes in my face again, I'll just have to tell you about it after. Yeah, so I guess I'll see you at the final rinse. Okay, folks, doing the final rinse here. And I'm not going to be able to do a blind reveal like I usually do because if you remember, I think this was day three I did this. You're supposed to physically wipe the negatives while it's in photo flow. So that will be my plan to take the negatives out and put them in photo flow. I guess at that point I'll be able to see if I did a decent job or not. So yeah, I guess I'll do the blind reveal, and then I guess I'll put it in photo flow. All right, folks, wish me luck. Well, I can already tell there are some very underexposed looking shots. 
but I can also tell there are a couple of shots that look good. All right, let's uh, dunk this into the photo flow. I don't know how the gloves will react to me wiping it across. I've heard lots that you just make sure your fingers are nice and dunked in the photo flow. I'm going to do a nice squeegee and that should get the remaining crud off of the negatives. If it doesn't work, then at least I know I can use alcohol. You can definitely see some stuff came off. I'm going to do that one more time just for good measure. Now, while that's sitting in there for the second round of photo flow, uh, I just want to say that uh, there are not going to be a lot of shots to turn out here. And I'm not, I'm not upset. In fact, I'm actually kind of relieved. Um, it sounds weird, but I'm relieved in the way that um, there are some shots that I took just in case, some extra long exposures, and it looks like those are the ones that turned out. I was out on a photo shoot recently with somebody, and they told me that the light meter that I used, Sakonic 758DR, is horrible in low light situations, and now I believe them. Uh, I don't. I, I guess I'll have to find another alternative. Yeah, the photo flow is officially filthy, so I am glad that I followed the instructions properly this time. I won't know for sure how these turned out until they dry and I've got them scanned in. You don't have to wait though. Here are today's highlights and my contact sheet. Okay guys, before I talk about the results, I want to show you something very, very cool. Do you remember when I said yesterday that one of my viewers was overnight FedExing me some uh, Russian film to use with that Orwo developer? Well, he sent me all of this. Ow, this is way too much. This is so generous. Thank you so much. I have... Over, I have easily over a dozen episodes I can make now with these. Thank you so much. Okay, now on to what I think. First off, I made my goal of getting one shot per scene. Uh, except for that alleyway, I found that was a little too dark. And that was because I used the camera's meter and not my handheld meter. And I also made my second goal of developing the film better. I didn't have the same issue as I had last time because I wiped the negatives physically in the photo flow and that got rid of 90% of the problem. I've got some dust that I had to get rid of, but that's because I ran out of canned air. What can you do? What do I think of the film? Uh, the answer to that is undecided uh, because I am normally judging film when I see it shot in the daylight. I honestly thought that a tungsten balanced negative would mean that the tungsten lights would come out white. I guess I was wrong in that because they all still look 
yellowy orange. Um, you guys can let me know in the comments why I'm an idiot, I guess. <laughs> Not too sure uh, what the answer is to that. Maybe I need to shoot this film in daylight to see the difference. Maybe the low light situation had something to do with it. I honestly don't know. Do I hate the film? No. Uh, because I, again, I don't have a solid opinion. It was an incredibly challenging night. I was running on fumes. I was chasing the night sky as far as before the sun rose and rush hour came into play. There were a lot of factors involved and I'd like to and I'd like to try it again some point down the road. I think I got a couple of good shots here, not as many as I normally do. And as you can see from the contact sheet, it's really hard to cut underexposed shots properly. One of the strips is too long, the other is too short. Thankfully, those frames are sort of useless anyway. And that's my thoughts on that. I would say that this wasn't a failure but it wasn't a success either. I'm not mad. This is day 12. I'm bound to have some hiccups. Oh, right. The other thing that I wanted to mention too is that I hate using a tripod. I find it very restrictive. I know why a lot of people buy really expensive ball heads so they can get their composition exactly the way they want it. In my case, I did some straightening and cropping and, you know, you got to do what you got to do to make the shot look like you want it, as we learned on day eight. Uh, by the way, I got I released day eight yesterday and the outpouring of kind words was just incredible. And not only could some of you relate to my situation, a lot of you, it seemed, but um, you all love the photos. I mean, I did love the photos at the beginning, but now that I've got some time separated, I love them even more. And I just know that I'll do that much better next time. I'll be prepared. It was an incredible learning experience. So yeah, day 12 in the bucket. Yeah, now I've only got five days to go. I want to make sure I finish strong. I definitely, definitely have enough film. If I had made the stretch goal for the full 30 days for, um, for this campaign, I still would have too much film. It's... The generosity is just amazing. I keep looking over this way because the pile of film, the pile of donated film is just sitting by my enlarger right now. And I'm like, there's not going to be room for food in the freezer once I get all this in there. <laughs> so again, thank you to everybody I mentioned on the last episode. And of course, Al for overnight FedExing that. I'm definitely going to be using the Russian film and the Orwo developer in the next couple of days. So keep an eye out for that. Now, tomorrow, I didn't ask you guys what film I should shoot with. Tomorrow is going to be one of my quote unquote cheat days. I'm going to be shooting with Instax Square. I bit the bullet and I got the camera and it's just waiting in my office and I look forward to it. It should be a fun time. And until tomorrow, stay classic. That is absolutely insane. 